everyone welcome to the podcast always a pleasure to have a good brother and fellow mensch mr eli weber here to get his insights on what's going on in his world his channel and also share with him a little bit of cursory knowledge that we have been blessed with that will hopefully benefit his community as well and it's just a nice fireside chat so welcome if you are new to the podcast please do like subscribe and share and hit that personalization button so you don't miss a moment of the action eli how you doing today good sir we're, we're doing great uh we're a little ahead of schedule, and uh, and that's a good thing. That is a good thing. That's awesome. I'm glad you're you're safe and well during this this crazy time. Um, I guess that's probably a good, maybe as good as any you and I can just riff off anything. But uh, given where you are in Arizona and looking juxtaposed across to Florida and that area, um, what's your take on what's going on over there? And, and ultimately, do you see something positive coming out of all the quagmire? Yes. I mean, I, I, it, this is a it, very interesting question because I, I, I'm seeing a lot of information now coming out about are the White Hats really in control? Are, you know, why are they allowing this to happen? Mm -hmm. And I think what people really don't understand what's going on from a three dimensional, rational kind of way of understanding things. In other words, why is this one dying? Why is that? These kinds of thoughts, we are in the middle of, in my opinion, of, of a major war, probably the, the probably the war to end all wars. This is mm -hmm. this is the, the biggest war ever. And it's not being fought. It is, you know, there are guns, there are airplanes, there are munitions, there are underground bases, there are all these things. But the war is really a war for the survival of humanity. And it's winner takes all. And there are going to be casualties. And there is a strategy at play using what, what they call game theory, which is like super or supra rational. In other words, it doesn't operate from a, a kind of traditional vantage point where you have, okay, you have 100 guns on this side, 100 guns on that side, four grenades here, five grenades. It's not about that. This is a war for the heart and soul of humanity, of human beings. So at the end of this war, when we win it, which we must, if, if we don't win, we, we, though, it will, you know, we have to win. It's not an option. We right, we can't failure is not an option. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, when we are finished with all these things, and you might be pulling your hair out saying, Why would the White Hats let people die in North Carolina? Why would they let uh, FEMA do what they did? Why would you know all these kinds of rational thoughts do not really uh, do not really appreciate the 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 desperate nature of this conflict. But at the end of the day, and I, 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 I think I come across as a little bit, but I just finished my other, um, my other uh, recording for the day. But at the end of this, what does victory look like? Victory, with all due respect to, to all the financial things, yeah, yeah. Vic yeah, victory is not about us getting rich. We will be rich. We will not worry about money. When this is over, you will not ever think, you will not be thinking, oh my, I, I can't afford that. I mean, it's just like, you know, I mean, I, I live like that now. I'm, I'm very, I'm, I consider myself rather poor. I'm rather poor. But I basically, you know, if we need something, we, we buy it. We don't, we don't think, to, you know, Danielle and I are like, how do we accomplish getting this object like, you know, we needed fuses. Well, I blew up my fuse circuits in the in the RV uh, a couple of nights ago. We, you know, we don't think to ourselves, can we afford new fuses? We just go down and buy it. Somehow we figure out a way to buy it. But at but at the end of this conflict, what victory looks like is not. It's not. It's not just that you will be wealthy beyond. In other words, you will be so wealthy you won't need to think about money. You won't have to think about well, can I can I afford? You know, I really want to buy forty five gold gold eagles. You know, you, you won't even you'd be like just so you just go buy it. You know, it, it it will. That's the way the world is heading, in my opinion. But what the real victory is is that 
we will no longer be limited by thinking that's been imposed upon us by other by 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 satanists by by bad people that don't want you to achieve your true potential and what does that mean i mean people talk about this you know but you're a multi-dimensional being you're spiritual you're all this stuff what it really boils down to is listening to your inner voices is hearing your inner voices is connecting with i think jonathan would say connecting to spirit and I'm, I'm watching this series with uh, with Danielle called The Manifest, and they call it they call it the calling. I got the calling. What is the calling? The calling is that every human being has within them a prophet. You know, we all have the ability to to what you might call prophesizing. It's not prophesizing. It's just connecting with your soul. It's connecting with your higher force and understanding that things do not have to happen in a rational way. Mm. That you can get, like, I used the example uh, yesterday. I I live, I, I have to drive on very difficult roads to get out of here. It's uh, 10 miles on back back roads. And Yesterday, for a minute, for a second, I stopped focusing on what I was. I, I was not laser focused on driving just for a second. And in one millisecond, my truck, basically two wheels of my truck fell into like started falling into the canyon. It was like a really horrible situation. We jumped out of the truck, Danielle and I, onto the upside of the truck. The truck was just stationary there. But I got a calling and this is where we're heading this is the consciousness that we're heading to the calling said to me ellie this is about you reaching out and making friends this is about relationships you're at the end of this you are going to do something on your it's not about the truck the truck was hanging on there were two tires on the thing it's not about the truck it's not about the dinars it's not about the price of gold Okay, you may think it is, and that's a beautiful thing to study. I'm not knocking it, sure. but at the end of the day, you're going to understand that there's a transcendent force that everyone has the ability to to access. It's not you don't have to do anything special. You just have to not do all the things you're used to doing, which is worrying, which is being scared, which is reaching mm -hmm. out to experts, which is pleasing you know going by the matrix like the matrix says i have to have insurance so i have to you know i have to do it it's a way you know all that stuff just get out of that and that's what we've done up here yeah. and trust mm -hmm. the inner voices so the voice said it's all about communing because the truth of the matter is i'm the kind i'm a hard-headed dude man and i will not reach out to anybody i will i would you know i would rather practically die than ask for help so here i am with two tires off the road so what did it force me to do i had to ask for help i don't like asking for help but i I asked for help remember the calling said to me it's not about the truck it's about relationship so i ended up calling I, I didn't know who to call at first. I ended up calling the only two people that I know in this area. I have two neighbors who, who communicate with me on a regular basis. And I said, my truck is stuck off the road. And, you know, the long and the short of it is they came in. One of, one of my friends had a, has a truck and he was able to pull it off the road and we got off the road. But the whole thing is here that you might be thinking Oh my God, if the White Hats were in control, why did North Carolina happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen in the medical thing? Why did this happen in the financial thing? Why, you know, why do I, don't I not have enough money for groceries? All these things, kind of like when you look back in World War II, you think to yourself, well, man, why didn't they just get out of there? You know, and now we're faced with the same situation in Florida. It's like, you don't want to leave your house. I'm going to leave my house because somebody's telling me there's a big storm coming. It's like, I'll stay in my house. So the, the, the thing is at the end of this war, 
you and I and everybody else will understand that it's those quiet little voices that say, don't worry about the truck, man. It's about relationship. We had a big kumbaya. The all the th three, my three and Danielle, four of us were together. And we had a beautiful, we spent about a half hour just shooting the breeze and talking about the neighborhood. And really, and, and one of my, my friends said, you know, the neighborhood is really coming together. We're the neighborhood, four people on, we're talking about, <laughs> 200 acres up here. I mean, two, 300, you know, we're talking about a huge expanse of, of land. You can't even imagine how much, you know, open land is up here. But, you know, so, so what I would say is like, if you're looking at the details, you're going to miss the whole picture. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be looking at the price of the dinars. I think it's very important. And I think it gives us hope. And I, and I look at the price of the dinars. I, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that at the end of this war, you and I and everybody else will be firmly rooted in the idea that we just know things. And we don't necessarily know why we know things. But that and that that I believe is what the victory looks like in this war. We will trust ourselves. Really good. First of all, philosophical articulation as you always do, Eli, which we which you, I personally love, and a lot of our audience, audience and yours does respectfully love. Uh, but it also begets the opportunity for me to say something to you about that and to my audience as well. Well, both sides respectively in this open forum that we always have. I want to be really clear about this with you and the audience. This channel was started out of obedience to the Lord as a Christian. It's not something I wanted to do. I was comfortable behind the scenes. You have been tasked by God or Yeshua to your humble guy, as I know you to be, but to your own admonition, sometimes a bit stubborn. Like I'm stubborn. A lot of people I think are stubborn in different ways. So it manifests to use that word in different ways. Some people it's stubborn about money. Some people it's stubborn about asking for help. Some people it's stubborn about their time, whatever. Um, it, it shows up in different idioms. But both you and I have been tasked with being pulled out of our comfort zone. I learned a long time ago, your comfort zone will kill you. Be comfortable in the uncomfortable. That is the comfort zone, right? And so that being said, to everything that you said so beautifully and cogently, and I, I'm totally on board with you, this channel is an act of obedience because, yes, I'm comfortable in front of the camera. Yes, I, I can speak fluently and whatever. That's fine. But that's, that's just because God has equipped me to do that for these purposes. But would I rather be behind the scenes, not taking the grief and the negativity and the haters and the minions and the trolls? Yeah. But it's about a bigger, per like, why are we doing this? What's the overarching goal here? The overarching goal is to be in service, community, and using our talents. All that said, Eli, for me and our team, the money is a means to an end. It's not about being avaricious and Ooh, how much can I get and put in a bank. We don't even like the banks. Frankly, we're looking forward to being our own central bank, which is why we say diversify so that you don't need to be on the B system, so that you don't have to be dependent on them to control you anymore, and so that you can help your fellow brother and sister one-to-one, peer-to-peer, -to -peer, like you and I are going to do, and like we're doing in this particular channel. So your, as, as my interpretation of what you're doing that I love is it's your spiritual outreach, connecting with soul, connecting with God and connecting with self. It's the intertwining of that. We're doing much the same thing in a complementary fashion on our side. It's just that the calling for us has been the financial reset because of this wonderful team we have and their ability to put these pieces together. But the, at the end of the day, Eli, it's just like us as musicians. When we write a song, we have to go, hey, dummy, what's the point? What are you trying to say? What's the bullseye? What's the message? Because you have three, maybe four minutes at current rate Hopefully in the future that will change, but you have, unless you're reaching a Grateful Dead audience, you have three to four minutes to get your point across is what I'm saying. You have a bullseye. And, and so we have one here. And for us, we're trying to get this community to think and a, a change their mindset, take action, and so are they prosper. So money is a means to an end. When we're on the other side of it, it won't matter. Now, what I always ask my audience to think about and challenge them in a loving way is, what is your wealth tolerance? Right, because money is like 
like a home. It's relative, right? To some people, a three-bedroom house is a mansion. To some people, it's a vacation home. It's So wealth is the same way. Like to some people, a million dollars is going to be a lot of money. They couldn't even imagine having that much. Other people, that's paltry. They, they think much bigger. So we always have to think about your wealth tolerance. Um, we're going to have things like replicators in the future. We've already got med beds sitting on the sidelines. We found out that Trump and the military are actually um, working with the hospitals to phase them in. And the way we know that is I had a family member go in the hospital recently and they were having trouble getting a room for two days. Why would that happen? That never happened before. You know, our friend Kathy in Kentucky, who's shown us, I've shown pictures to you of the mobile uh, units that are out there in Kentucky that she met with a managing director at a hospital who told her back in May, if you remember point blank, that they're phasing in new light and frequency therapies, AKA med beds. I don't know if they knew that or they couldn't say it, but it's manifesting itself. It's showing itself. All that is to say that our modality of, of calling of reaching people is through the money for the same purposes as you, as a means to an end. So it's like you and I, Eli, we're going to meet somewhere for coffee somewhere, but the road that we take to get there may be a very different and divergent one, but it complements and it forks in the road at an apex point, right? And that road is truth, servitude, and humility, which we both work really hard to do. And it's, that's why I think we complement each other so well, but I just want to be clear to our audiences that this isn't about you know, cause I see some of the comments are really nasty. Like, Oh, this is all about money and money. Love money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. That's the, that's legalism of the religious spirit getting in the way. What the Bible actually says is the love of anything over God is evil. Your family, your car, your job, your spouse, money, your children, that can be an idol that goes above God. Sorry to be the spoiler folks, but the reality is anything that's above the Lord Yeshua is, is evil. So money is not evil inherently of itself. It's, it's how it's used. It's the heart, right? You and I both agree God looks at the heart because that's where all the actions come out of, right? Bible says the heart is wicked. Who can know it? Only God. So he knows our true intentions. So all that I'm sorry to say is that money is the vehicle we've been using to get through to people because that's been the calling mechanism for which we've been chosen. But at the end of the day, it's never been about avariciousness and greed. It's about generosity and service and freeing people up from the constraints of mental and physical and financial bondage. And so I'm really glad that you and I work together in concert every month to do our best to achieve that. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I didn't mean to say that, you no. know, that's that studying, uh, studying the markets because what, at the end of the day, what, being your own <laughs> investor and you know like i had a pension fund and all this stuff um i took all my money out and um invested it the way i wanted to invest it so at the end of the day becoming becoming sovereign about your money situation is is really the the uh the take home is really the victory it's really like i said that the the victory would be a new kind of consciousness where you just know things so too with money the reason that danielle and i i mean there's some weeks where we have like zero you know i mean the bank we we are in a you know we've invested a lot of money into this uh land project so all our money basically go, goes whatever money i get from like pensions and this kind of stuff goes directly into the land we don't even get to see it so we are are really doing i think what you're talking about which is i have a little bit of crypto i have a little bit you know i invest in a gdjt i love that stock because it, it you know I, I it's a consistent earner you know i'm i'm questioning now i'm i'm starting to question it's like i've been i've been hodling x xlm for an xrp for five years you know it was supposed to go to the moon five years ago and i'm thinking to myself you know i might be better taking some of that out and investing into djt stock because it i know it's going to go triple you know i i i know to buy it under 20 and i know you know now i know when it gets to 60 sell, sell some of it but um this kind of financial flexibility and and being able to like say okay i got you know i still have like 
five ounces of silver in my, and you know, in my, in my pocket, you know, how can I pay the, you know, we have to buy a certain amount of, we, we buy, you know, grass fed beef and, uh, uh, farm, you know, we, we drink, uh, raw goat's milk and this kind of thing it costs a fortune but mm -hmm. some you know we and we struggle we we don't have you know for us it's not like millions or thousands it's more like do we have a hundred dollars to, to to buy some meat this week but the, i think i'm agreeing with you completely because i think what we're going to gain from this kind of you know not relying on experts you know like you're talking about um you know, your last guest is a big expert. And, and I understand, like, she has some old fashioned ways of thinking about it. We all do. I, I think there was something I saw on the web recently that said, we, you know, as humans, our brain is not wired for change. It, we like to stay where we're in our comfort zone, like you say. And, right. and to get out of that comfort zone is so important. So, you know, like if you're if you're uh, relying on an investment manager, I mean, it might be OK. You know, I, I know some people have done really well just to stick with the uh, the old system. I I think that that the, the financial victory that you are really behind is is the idea of being a sovereign investor and and being in control of your money and buying what you need to be and you need to to use and what you need and um and getting out of this the fear space because so many of us live and myself included in abject fear about the finances because you you can't really do so well right now it's it's very hard to do well because with the inflation and everything else and the instability and the gold and the silver and the this and the that's you know it, it you have to be very fast on your feet and at the end of the day what what i see as and i i think you really are a great uh, you know example of this is is the idea is that you're passing on to people the idea that they all can do it, that you can do it yourself, that you can, you know, you can get on Coinbase, you can buy, a little, you know, put a little silver under your sink or wherever you feel safe or, you know, I, that that you are in control of your own destiny. That is part of this whole programming um, escape thing that that we're heading for and and this is i i i told you know i i i'm not in any way saying you know that that you're about money i i think it's it's absolutely brilliant and it's probably where the rubber hits the road the most it's probably the the most important aspect of your life that you need to feel that you are in control i mean and, and that you can trust your instincts i mean i i often get you know like with 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 my investing you know i i know the difference between me getting emotional you know and and wanting to buy something because it's going up and me being like i'll get a voice like you need to get out of this you know you need to get out of the market right now just get out you know i i will i listen to those voices because i i believe in myself and i've been doing this for enough years that i i haven't amassed fortunes but i'm always able to get what i really really need Oh, I, sorry. I had, I had, I had muted so I could then interrupt you. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. And I wasn't implying that you were saying that that was more of me speaking to both of our respective audiences to be clear that we're both on the same page that don't get bogged down in the quagmire details that suggest that because we talk about finances so much that that's all we think about because we have brothers like you and sisters on that are not financial to make that point that, the money is, is it, it's, it's, again, it's a means to an end. So we're, it's a Red Sea moment, right? And you got to go in the vehicle you're in to get to the other side. And I understand for a lot of people, they can't see the other side. We understand that, that this, God puts on certain blinders and scales to certain people's eyes for a reason. And, and he picks certain people. I don't know why. He picked Moses. Moses didn't want to be picked. He used Joseph, he used David. He used a lot of different, he's you've been using people. God qualifies the unqualified. He uses somebody like me who doesn't, ha, I mean, I have a business background and I, I know finances, obviously, and I've been an entrepreneur, but, you know, I didn't go to Warren School of Business. I didn't go to Harvard by choice, but uh, I did for music. That's, you know, Berkeley College of Music. But the point is, at the end of the day, business is business. 
whether it's soybeans, cattle, or commodities, it's all the same thing at the end of the day. But it's funny, Eli, because it's challenging the construct of thought is what you're talking about in my, in my, to my mindset. And with that in mind, a lot of these people that we interview, like Lynette, like Bill Holter, like Andy Sheckman, you know, Greg Manorino, all great people. I mean, really cool to talk to off camera. Um, we brought them in with the express purpose of enlightening our audience so that they could make, I was thinking about this on my walk today. You would appreciate that doing your walk in the field. I was thinking about, it. it's like, it's, it's, it's so ironic, right, Eli? Because we brought in all these people month to month with the express idea and concept of, of expanding the breadth and depth of the financial situation so that people could make the best choices because I'm not a financial advisor, thank God. And this isn't con this finance is constituting financial advice is just giving you really good information and puzzle pieces so that to your point, what you do with it is up to you. Self-governance is what we're about, right? Instead of being a part of the problem, you get to be a part of your own solution. But the ironic part is that as we bring these subject matter experts in, we're actually educating them about the godly global reset because I laugh about it with my friends. You'll, you'll appreciate this, but um, <clears throat> I don't know if you ever saw that movie, The Big Short. Did you ever see that? <laughs> Watch it sometime with Daniel. It's very entertaining. It's, um, it's about this guy, Dr. Michael Burry. This was about the 08 bailout when we went through the 16 years ago and you know they bailed the banks out and basically just Ponzi schemed themselves a bunch of money. Everybody knows that now in the aftermath. We're going through an inverse pattern now where we're reverse engineering the whole thing for good. They're trying to bail in because they're on their way out, meaning the old system. Now, I was with Lynette today, and she even admitted on camera that this is a global reset. This is a global wealth transfer. What she does not understand yet, and we pray she'll get there along with other people, is that, so I, I'm calling myself facetiously the Michael Burre of the wealth transfer in that and follow me on this because everybody would agree that gold and silver are God's money. And it's been around since the beginning of time and before time, and it's invaluable. And they used to pay people in salary salt. That's where the term salary comes from is from salt derivative, as you know, in the old Jewish traditions, right? That's, that's an absolute universal absolute between both of our worlds, Christian and, and Hebrew is still the same thing. So it's good to make those connections. So Michael Burry basically saw Eli that, the entire real estate market was crap. It was a Ponzi scheme and all those bonds tied to it were fraudulent. So it would take good debt and bad debt. It would be like financial cross-contamination is a good way to look at it. Like you would do with, you wouldn't do with food. You don't want to do other with finance. So he saw what everybody else didn't see. He said, short the market, get out of it. It's crap. It's all fake. And everybody got upset with him, but he was ultimately right. Which is ironic because you talked about the stock market. He actually just dropped 50% of his portfolio because like everybody else, he knows the writing on the wall. And other good news that proves we're winning is uh, Soros, who I don't think is around anymore, liquidated seven properties to one of his business partners, dumping it because he knows that the commercial, the residential real estate is about to take a huge dump, quite literally. So I say that I'm facetiously the Michael Burry of the Global Reset because one of the central themes that we have with our these types of ex subject matter experts that I've already mentioned is they all universally agree that gold and silver is valuable. What they fail to understand is those same physical mechanisms of gold and silver are tie-ins to the cryptos, are tie-ins to the bonds like Zimbabwe, are tie-ins to the currencies. And, and, and this is probably a good segue, Eli, to talk about the financial stuff, if you're okay with that, briefly, which is that, because you know the background, which is that we have arguably in our humble team's opinion, the most important summit that's ever happened in the history of modern civilization in the BRICS, less than two weeks from now in Kazan, which is outside of Moscow, Russia, which Putin is hosting. He spent considerable time with Trump putting this together. Again, for those who don't know, Brazil, uh, BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, okay? And all those sub countries within those respective countries and continents, et cetera, coming together to converge, to de-dollarize away from the global central bank cabal system. We just had yesterday, I believe it was Cuba, Sri Lanka are joining. Iraq's already been part of it. And uh, this is kind of exciting. Eli, I want to show you something. We talked about this, about XRP, because Lynette had some cognitive dissonance regarding the 
pegging and the backing of XRP being proven. So I'd like to show you something here real briefly that uh, we can get your feedback on. And it is thusly. Let me know when you can see it. Yeah, I, I got it. So back on August 12th, John G, one of our great team members, I always talk about, too humble to mention his accomplishments, but uh, we know what he brings to the table amongst the many. He found this article and I, and I asked him to help me to prove to Lynette that XRP was legit. So yes, okay, they have been temporarily appealed, but it means nothing because they're running into the safety of BRICS because Russia doesn't give a crap about sanctions. It means nothing. They have so many countries, they have almost 160 countries in total between the ones established and the ones vying to get in that they have such an amalgam of population over 80% of the world's population and they can disregard what the US deep state cabal says and say, ah, screw you, I don't care, I'm going right around you. XRP already did it and we're about to prove it. As you can see in this article dated August 12th where my cursor is, XRP worked with India, interestingly enough, I don't know if you knew this, India a couple months ago made a rather massive large oil purchase with China using the petro yuan, but they had to have a mechanism to connect it. What did they use? XRP. Even Lynette has now tacitly acknowledged this, right? So we had a couple weeks ago, Eli and Earl's stomping ground of New York and the useless nations over on 47th, or as affectionately we both know, Dag Hammerschold is what that area is constituted as since I lived on 46th and 2nd, between 2nd and 1st, if you know the area. Uh, they had a big general assembly two weeks ago came and went, and most people thought it was business as usual. It was not, because what all those countries said, including Prime Minister Sudani of Iraq, said peace and prosperity are our number one goal, and it's time to bring back Iraq regionally and internationally the way it deserves. Then he hustled off stage real fast. You had Zambia and many other countries asking for what? Debt relief, Jasara. So this summit in less than two weeks represents the decoupling and de-dollarizing of the entire world's economy. You have another 50 basis point hike coming for the interest rates, which they're going to try to sell as a great thing for buying homes. Uh, uh, uh. That is a panic mode, just like 16 years ago in reverse now, Eli, to where that's admitting that the dollar is crap. And you know that because you just said it's costing more for food, for gas, for insurance, for whatever daily mainstays you have. Bill, Holt, Bill Holter calls it an inverse effect, meaning a hyperinflation of the things we need, right? Your household goods and a hyperdeflation of the things we have, your home, the cash you have on hand. And you know that simply because it's costing more to buy the same crap you bought a week, a month, a year, five, 10, 20 years ago, hut, hut, hike. It's all right there. Right now, here's another interesting article. We'll switch over to here. This couple of days ago, Ripple and Mercado tying with Bitcoin to partnered cross border payments in Brazil. More BRICS talk, more proof that they're going around it. Right now, for those who want to know, with XRP, you asked me this question a million times where do I get it? You can get it on Coinbase, 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 Coinbase. You can now also get it on Robinhood. It's another great place to get it. Yes, you can always get it on Uphold, but it takes a few days to get the transfer. So that's why Coinbase is incentivizing people to go there because it's much more in line with real-time transactions. But um, what's going on right now, Eli, is uh, Sudani is, let me stop this. Sudani of Iraq is in a good place. They are digitizing their new system, getting on with the electronic system. They are talking about reforms. They just had an article that shows they have an uptick in population in Iraq. Why is that significant? Because they're going to need to have more reconstruction projects. When you bring, as you know, being a New Yorker, you bring a lot of people into an area, you got to build stuff to sustain the population, to, to maintain all that momentum, all that energy, the frequency of people. Yes, frequencies. So likewise, they're building the largest building in Baghdad, the Central Bank of Iraq, which we showed you last time, larger than even Dubai, because Iraq is going to be a powerhouse to be reckoned with for a long period of time. And when they talked about the construction, they talked about reforms. They're ultimately talking about bringing back the rate in the private sector, not in Forex. That's the Ministry of Planning, which we've discussed. I'm doing this again for posterity repetition. People need to hear things apparently a hundred times to get it through their head. Here we are. There's three things that Iraq, as we see it, Eli needs to do. 
they need to, um, if let me just give me a second here, I'm going to open up my notes and I'll read it to you. If you just bear with me one moment, because it's better if I read it to you verbatim. So I put this out. I don't know if you're on my telegram, but I put this out earlier today, three points of, of attack. They need, we need Israel, your country to hit the secret nuclear power plants of Iran. Well, we've been talking about that for a while. You're seeing an uptick on that. They're finishing Hezbollah and they're going into Iraq, Iran next. And we know that because Sudani has said to the Iranian factions inside Iraq, get out now, because he knows what's coming. Number two, remove the currency auctions, remove the dollar money laundering, right? They've already said before the end of the year, that's going to happen. They're siphoning off the dollar because the Iranian proxies within Iraq and the entire mainstay of the world has been living on the dollar hegemony by force, not by design or desire. That is now changing vis-a-vis -vis BRICS. Number three, removing the corrupt files. What's Trump doing over here? He's got RFK Jr. talking about all the patents and removing fluoride in the water and removing the poisons in the food. What happened with the trucking supply shortage that happened over in New York with the 45,000 seaport workers? They were removing poisons in the food and those trafficked women and children in those crates that were making the workers sick to have to realize they were complicit in a in an industry that would be rife with this, right? So behind the cloak and dagger of a, of a union strike, that's what they were doing, moves and counter moves. So basically they're removing the corrupt files in Iraq, which is gonna implicate Maliki and a whole bunch of other bastards over there. And all those rats are gonna be like sinking ship. Basically what I'm saying to you is, as we see it, we're sitting Eli right now, both financially, geopolitically, spiritually, all the isms. Three, counting today, the most important three weeks, arguably, in our modern human history as we see it, facing us smack dab right in the face right now, because we've got all these events happening. We've got a hurricane, another one, I think, was it Milton or something in Florida now? Pray for my, my family out there in South Florida that it just goes straight out to sea. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. We get it out. We cast it out into the sea in Yeshua's mighty name, and actively taking, as you would agree, the power of prayer and manifestation of calling out the demons is something that we can all collectively do, right? We've got that. We've got uh, the Supreme Court is reconvening right now. People think nothing's happening. We just had Lloyd Brunson on last week. He has a shadow case in there. We believe it's already been heard, but it will start to come out optically right before the election. What a coincidence. Oh, yeah, that's right. There are. Okay. So then you have that. You have the aforementioned BRICS summit. Right. You also are going to have you talked about the stock market. Now we're not giving financial advice, but point of fact, what did we have in October of 2008? We had massive market corrections. Right. The deep state was using John McCain, who was not an honorable man, sorry, but he wasn't, to say that the economy is good. Now Trump is reverse engineering it using Kamala and Waltz, whoever these people are, to say the economy is good. Everything is great when we know it's not. So reverse engineering as an example. So we have all that stuff going on and converging over the next three weeks. Um, we had Derek Johnson on yesterday. I asked him point blank, are we going to have an election? Everybody wants to know uh, if we are, what's going to go on? He said, well, two things. If we have one, it's because we're supposed to have one and military and police presence will be there surreptitiously to oversee the corruption. If you see something, say something. Two, he said, you could march down to your polling place where you always go in the past and find out it's not there. Nothing's happening. And that tells you your answer. So in the next three to plus weeks, we're going to have a lot of these answers become revealed to us, but we're sitting in a very exciting time for those who can see at a 30, 50,000 foot, foot vantage point above the fray of their everyday stuff and understanding that it's hard for everybody to do that. That's why we're, you know, attempting to do these podcasts to shed some light on it. So um, I don't know, hopefully that gives you something good to work with. Yeah, I, I think you, you what you're saying is brilliant. Um, th this is something I, I haven't picked up. But this is something that I, I thought was thinking or came to me is Please. that um, th we call uh, we call it a timeline shift. So the, the what happened in 2008 has to happen again in a good way. 
just mm -hmm. like what happened in 2000 and 2020 with the election has to happen in a good way. It has to be a timeline shift. So, I mean, personally, I think the election in some form will have to go through just to just for people to feel like we 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 came we heard you know they cheated they did this and we we won and to empower humanity to to believe in themselves and 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 not to fall into this trap of you know cbs have having some expert come out so-called so expert come out who's really just a an arm of the uh of the deep state and, and coming out and brainwashing us with some idiotic uh, ideas. I saw a thing today about uh, it was um, they were correcting. Let's see, it was oh yeah, the, uh, uh, Leslie Stahl, who I actually went to high school with um, and married a, a friend of mine. But L Leslie Stahl came out and and, t and said to Trump, you know, no, you you're you're wrong about the Hunter laptop, and it's and she lied and she got away with it. And it's like these people, they do not have humanity's interests in mind. They are brainwashed beyond belief. I grew up with these people; they're absolute idiots, and you know, they never. <laughs> really you know back in the you know back in the day in the in the 60s when things were really you know when there were people well actually leslie Stahl, i think she was kind of a but you know, in other words the same people who who missed the the revolution then all became big revolutionaries actually i remember mara liason as well from my high school but th these people are all uh they just never got past this liberal brainwashing and yeah. uh yeah i don't know how i got into this stream but but the 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 bottom line is that these people are just like they're like hmm you know it they're they're super rational they're not they're like they're like negative instinctual they're like just instinctually they just say oh no that can't be that's we don't we don't accept that whereas where we're going as as a culture is into the idea of a positive kind of intuitive nature where we will we will constantly, we, and, and this is something you put really brilliantly, but we will be embracing change. We'll be like, I live to change. Um, they said about my Rebbe, uh, Rebbe Menachem Schneerson, that he was never the same person two days in a row. And that's not, a, you know, and you would think in, in by normal cultural measures that that would, you know, that would classify you as like a schizophrenic madman. But no, that's the way people should be. We should be constantly growing and changing. And, uh, you know, I think being abreast and being an active participant in this, you know, uh, I hold XRP, I hold XLM, I hold a little silver, a little gold. I, I invest in DJT. I, you know, I just, you got to be fast and, and flexible here because you don't know. the my My big question, I mean, I don't really understand. I, I was told years ago that Bitcoin was not was really like a fraudulent um, enter, you know, and it, it was it, it, like unlike XRP and XLM, which actually do something that Bitcoin did nothing. It was slow and it was backed by uh, what, what is it? The uh, Tether by Tether, which is uh, another it's kind of like another, um, you know, fiat currency scam. So I don't know why people are always talking about like the future is in Bitcoin when I so I, I'm I'm confused. Maybe you can enlighten me with this. I I you know, I've stayed I I made a little bit of money in Bitcoin around 2000, 2020, but I got out of it when I heard that it's a scam and it doesn't do anything and it's slow and it's you know, I, I don't know. And I'm but I hear Trump talking about Bitcoin. So, I, I you know, I. I, I'm th I'm actually thinking to myself, it, it, you know, after five years of avoiding it, of, of like maybe I should invest in a little Bitcoin. I don't know because my, you know, the, my XRP has been, you know, my XLM has been uh, at nine cents for uh, five years. So, you know, this is an area. Maybe you. you what, what are your thoughts about Bitcoin? Sure. Well, a lot to unpack there. So let's let's take it like an elephant, one piece at a time. Because you said a lot of good things inside of that. Funny you mentioned Leslie Stahl. I, I tend to like to rhyme things or come up with creative isms, just the creativity of our mindsets. And I used to see her on TV and I never felt 
even before I was awake, like, you know, I'm talking 20, 30 years ago before I, I mean, I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't, you know, put my finger on it. Like I can now I used to call her Leslie stall tactic. Cause it always seemed like she was like stalling her guests and trying to manipulate and, you know, interrupt and trying to control the narrative. Even back then I, I, I sensed that, um, Ronald, President Reagan used to say, and Derek Johnson said that yesterday, he would be probably one of the few people not implicated with all the other presidents like the Bushes and the Sorteros and the Clintons and all the rest of those scumbags. Um, Reagan used to say a very good quote about this, Eli, maybe you recall it. He said, you know, it's not that people are dumb. It's just they know so much it isn't so. Very diplomatic way of saying the same thing in a turn of phrase. So that's probably how it would constitute her and many of the media so-called moguls who are they really in control? Because you're starting to, I mean, did you notice Eli last week, Prime Minister, I think it's Bennett, Prime Minister of Israel right now, if I'm not mistaken, came on CNN, Communist News Network, fake news, and said in front of the whole world, which we put in our telegram, if you see it there for posterity, because people who are on that know that we put a lot of information, timely information at that every single day. Came out and said on CNN, yeah, we're going to hit the power plants of Iran. They're vulnerable and weak, and we have to do it now. It's now or never, basically, paraphrasing. I almost fell off my chair because you never see those guys tell the truth. I mean, they, they, they wouldn't even tell you the truth about what they had for lunch, let alone the real stuff, you know? So to see the fake news not be fake for once told me maybe they're being infiltrated more than we know because we don't see all there is to, to see, right? Isaiah 58 uh, my ways and thoughts are higher than your ways and thoughts. And there's a new thing that God's doing in, in this season. So transitioning from that point to your question about uh, Bitcoin, I think it was, you're going to see XRP once this nonsensical appeal. They're just delaying our wealth transfer. They're not going to be able to do it very long. And when that does, you're going to see XRP break free to a dollar. I'll give you a hint. When it goes to the 15 to $30 mark, watch for the dinar to happen publicly. I want to make a note of that, people. Just saying, we don't do dates or rates. I'm just giving you a marker. Okay, so that's that. That will affect XLM. It'll be a domino effect whereby once one goes, the others start to go and they start to cascade on each other. Shout out to Garrett for that term, by the way, domino effect, when I know he's watching this. Um, he had said that to me like five years ago and he's been absolutely right. And whatever they're telling us is, you know, do the opposite, do the inverse, reverse engineering. Now, to your point about Bitcoin, I don't currently own any because I'm not in a position to. However, Bitcoin is a, is, a, is a, we're in a season where God is going to be taking things that were meant for harm, Genesis 50, 20, and using them for good. Bitcoin is one. It has been nefarious. It will now be decentralized crypto like XRP because you can actually hold it and control it in your private wallet where you can't do that with many other cryptos. Some you can, some you can't. CBDC has come to mind. You don't want any part of that anyway. I think our audience knows that well by now. But that's where they want to steer people. So it's just a matter of using your godly discernment, or you would say using your, your spirit voice to channel proper discernment about, you know, when you have peace about something, right, typically, that's usually a good decision to go in one way. If you don't have peace, or you have a hesitation or something doesn't quite feel right, don't overanalyze why you feel that way. Trust your instincts. They're there for a reason from the Lord. I think ultimately Bitcoin was bad. It will be used for good as a decentralized currency. It will come off the SWIFT system. They will asset back it in some form of gold, right? They will. These things will work in concert. That's part of what BRICS is wholly here to do, is to merge the countries, merge the assets, merge the mechanisms, we believe Bitcoin, there's going to be a buying opportunity for God's people here in the near future, whether that's, I don't know, a month, two, three months, it's coming very soon. And you just set your buy sell limit orders on Coinbase. Um, we believe it's going to get down to somewhere between 10 and 20,000. And when it does, there's a great opportunity if you can do it. You know, post RV, I think is a good example of that, right? Dinar, whatever. Think of the reset as like owning your own business. If you own a business, right? Or you know people, Eli, that own a business. What's the first, you know, a lot of Jewish business owners, what's the first thing that they do? They take their profits and then they, they pay off their debts, whatever. And then they redivest back into the business to keep it going. And then the rest is for themselves to do with discretionary income. That's how we think people should govern themselves in this new wealth transfer, if that makes sense. If you can visualize that. 
you know, like a, like a pie, you cut it up in sections and every pie piece of pie has its own purpose. So we believe Bitcoin's going to go pretty high, like 250,000 plus. So if you can get it down at that lower rate, when it comes up, it's going to bounce back because it's going to be used for what was nefarious into something good. Now, some people that will resonate with and some people it won't. And that's fine. I, I talk to people all day long that, you know, somebody like Andy Sheckman is a good example because he's on other podcasts, his scope is opened up, including ours, that he now realizes it's not just gold and silver. There is cryptos, there are foreign currencies, there are bonds that I could take advantage of and expand my mindset, right? And when then we have somebody like Bill Holter, who's a John Wayne, gold and silver, that's it. He ain't gonna change his mind for anything. We don't try to, we just work within the constructs of what he knows and believes. So bear with me a minute. God understands us better than we will ever understand ourselves. Consequently, he knows what we can and can't handle, right? Some people, their wealth transfer is just gold and silver. Some people, it's gold and silver and crypto. Some people, it's just crypto. Some people, it's just currencies. And on and on it goes. It interchanges and interlocks. It isn't about trying to fight about who's right and who's wrong. It's about the wealth tolerance you can contend for, how much of the hundredfold or fivefold you can manage or want to manage, right? And what God is tasking you to do. Some people, he, he just wants you in this box, own a little bit of land and do this and that's it. Other people, he, he opens the, the floodgates a lot deeper. So it isn't so much about who's right or who's wrong. It's about staying in your lane and doing what he's tasked you to do and, and being blessed in what you have, becoming debt-free, becoming your own central bank. So I can't tell you whether or not to invest in Bitcoin. I can just tell you the facts of what we see coming. I would say, take what you've acquired today, take it to what you call your Revy or your spirit man, right? If I'm saying that right. And, and, and look for discernment. For me, that's Jesus. I go to him for discernment. And sometimes he gives it to me right away. Sometimes it takes a while, but it always comes at the right time. We always say on our channel, Eli, God's never late or early. He's always right on time. It's just not on our time. That's the frustrating part. You, uh, you, you muted. Yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed our time together. Yeah. I muted it because the wind, uh, we're ah. really kind of on the top of uh, top of a ridge. So the wind, uh, makes a lot of noise so i try to uh, and sure. also I, i'm running my generator right now so we're we're, we're out in the uh remote area in, in the, the wild, wild blue forest. yonder yeah <laughs> so it's, it's really uh well, you know, this I, is my main investment is really uh 170 acres of uh unlivable mountain <laughs> <laughs> area but i i, I love it so yeah That's you're cool. right i think I, I think you're right that that in, in financial matters, severity or, or your being your own uh, creator and being in your comfort zone is really what where it's at. But I, I really enjoyed talking to you and it's- uh, Yeah, always, always brother. Good. Yeah. Well, last, last words as always for the audience and where can people get you, find your work? Um, I'm back on YouTube. I'm doing a live broadcast every day on, on YouTube, sort of analyzing various aspects. It's a homesteading channel as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think if you just did a Google search for Ellie Weber, there, there are a couple of Ellie Webers, E-L-I. -E W E B E R Weber, um, but it's on. I'm on YouTube again, and I'm doing a live at, at various times uh, during the day from um, Sunday to uh, Friday. Great, awesome. We'll uh, we'll post that as we always do. And folks, as you know, if you are looking to get gold and silver, acquiring more, we have a great uh, relationship that we have there. We'll leave in the description. All same with currencies. We're looking for dinar, dong, zim, rupiah, and yes, bolivar. So we always get that invariably. We have a great relationship there as well. And we will also leave those links in the description, respectively. Eli Weber, good friend and brother Mensch, thanks for being here today. We love having you and we look forward to seeing you again shortly. Thanks so much and a happy new year. Happy new year, brother. Okay, bye.